Me personally, I've always been a big fan of the safety position. It's the last line of defense. And so much can happen that a safety has an impact on within the course of a game. And I've never quite understood why the safety position at times can be so devalued. A lot of people will say, well, you shouldn't take a safety that high. You take them lower. You can find quality guys later in the draft. Absolutely, you can. But you could really say that just about any other position in the National Football League, maybe outside of quarterback. And even in that case, you think about guys from the 2012 draft class, the two quarterbacks that started it and won Super Bowls were third-round picks in Russell Wilson and Nick Foles. It wasn't Luck, it wasn't RG Nee, it wasn't Tannehill, it wasn't Brandon Whedon, for God's sakes. It was none of those guys. It was the two guys taken in the third round that now have rings. So the point I'm getting at is I don't understand why positions like safety have been so devalued, especially because you look at the safety position, and to me, I can feel like I can make an effective argument that a well-rounded, complete, balanced safety has more impact on a game than a shutdown man cover corner. Now, granted, let's take a Richard Sherman, who has been a premier shutdown cover corner in the league for several years now. He's a guy, and he happens to be somebody that's pretty good in run support. He's a guy that was obviously a great man corner. He was very good in zone as well. But you wonder how many people might prefer an Earl Thomas, who you could deploy more effectively as a blitzer, who has that center field range, who could step up and play zone, step up and play man. I feel like a guy like Earl Thomas can have more overall impact on a game than a Richard Sherman because teams will avoid throwing to Sherman. And he's kind of locked into what he does. Earl Thomas, you can move around all over the place and do all types of different things with. And you get to that real fundamental question of who really made that Legion of Boom secondary go. Was it Richard Sherman or was it the safeties in Earl Thomas and Cam Chancellor? To me, I'm sorry, but I'll look at the safety position and if you've got that dude, there is absolutely nothing wrong with taking them high. They typically can be a leader of the defense. Again, they're the last line of defense. They can impact the game in so many ways that I think it's insane when people say, well, he's a safety, so he shouldn't go top five or top ten. That That's just ridiculous. And watching prospects this year, one guy that stood out to me is kind of like an alpha dog. Like one of those guys that you know. You just know. You look at him, you watch him, and you say, okay, he's got it factor. He's got dude factor. He's going to be a stud. And you feel like you're relatively confident that he is going to have a very long, productive, all-star type of NFL career. And to me, that guy in terms of the safety position this year is Derwin James. Like the whole debate between Derwin and Minka, I don't think is much of a debate. And I don't say that to knock Minka Fitzpatrick because that's still a really good prospect. But I feel like Derwin's another level above him, personally. I feel like Derwin is more of the type of guy that can come in and ch change a culture of a locker room change the culture of a defense, bring some swagger, some attitude, and playmaking ability, most importantly, to the back end of a defense from day one. Kind of somewhat similar to a Jamal Adams last year or a Malik Hooker when he was healthy last year. Like, I saw both of those guys, and they felt like alpha dogs. Derwin James feels like an alpha dog. And with it being a safety, I feel like taking a safety high, especially if the skills and the projectable talent is there, is a very, very safe way to go in the draft. So to me, I look at Derwin James, and he's all day a top 10 prospect in this draft. He's a beast at like six foot two, two 210 pounds, so he's a massive free safety, or if you want to use him as a more athletic, strong safety, so be it. He's a really good athlete. He's got good initial quickness, plenty enough speed. He's got the range to be able to play center field. His instincts are good. They're not great, but they're also not terrible. So sometimes he can be a step slow to read and react. He needs to get a little bit better at times reading the quarterback and where the play is going. But he does show a good feel for being in the right position in run support. And a lot of times seems to just find a way to be around the football. 
I thought he was an absolute beast in man coverage. Like I would have no problem or concern with him playing man up against running backs out of the backfield or out of the slot, tight ends, slot wide receivers. He can cover. He's got fluid hips. He's got lateral agility and movement skills to be able to stay close. He's got length. He's got strength. He can be a real force in press coverage. Like, you'll have teams probably view him as a strong safety type of guy, but this is a strong safety that can cover. He's pretty good in run defense as well. He can chase down all types of plays in pursuit. Like I said, his range is outstanding. He's big enough and physical enough to attack the hole, attack gaps, and work through the mess to make some stops. He showed adequate ball skills. Um, only a couple of picks in 2017, but he showed enough to at least be able to locate the football and knock the ball away, if anything else. Plays pretty hard. A relatively solid tackler. I will say I would like to see him at times lay a little more waste. Sometimes he can play just a tad bit too much under control. Like, you kind of want controlled fury a little bit. I think about Carl Joseph coming out of um, West Virginia, and what did I call him, like a bowling ball of freaking machetes? I mean, he just played with a nonstop anger, a fire, a fury. And I would like to see that unleashed out of Derwin a little bit more. Maybe once he gets to the NFL, he will unleash that because he was maybe perhaps in a little bit of a protective mode his last year at Florida State when he knew it was going to be his last year at Florida State. All of us knew it was going to be his last year at Florida State. We've known for over a year now that this guy was going to be a first-round pick and probably a very, very high one, as he should be. He can play zone. He can play man. He can defend the run. He's got some pass rush ability. He's got adequate ball skills that I think could be even better. He's got the athleticism to make plays all over the place. He plays relatively hard. The only major concern you could say that you have about him is he missed most of 2016 with that torn meniscus. I mean, like, that's the only major red flag on him. And it's a red flag, but a mis meniscus is not a multiple ligament tear in his knee. And he came back and he was a stud in 2017. Like... This is one of these players to me, you just don't overthink it a whole lot. You don't overanalyze. He's not perfect, absolutely not perfect, but he's a hell of a football player, and he's a stud, and I completely am confident he's going to be a stud at the NFL level as long as he stays healthy. And he stayed healthy in 2017, I felt. You know, in 2016, that was one injury. I have full confidence in this guy ending up being a top 10 player out of this draft in three, four years and should be drafted as such. I look at a team like Tampa picking seventh. He's absolutely the guy that should be on their radar. And if he falls out of the top 10, it's a bit of a damn shame because this dude is a player. He reminds me, gives me a similar impression to what I saw out of Eric Berry when he was at Tennessee in 2009 heading into that 2010 class. I saw him. And I just knew. And I didn't feel like I needed to do a whole lot more to quantify it. Derwin James is exactly the same. The dude's a stud and deserves to be a top 10 pick in this draft. And will validate said selection if taken there. Especially for a team like the Buccaneers. For the next 8 to 10 years.